this PowerPoint is designed to give you uh, an overview of the latest information on a relatively new field in science known as neuroscience and how this particular field has led to discoveries about the brain that will impact education both today and in the future. Leslie Hart, a well-known educator, was one of the first to uh, take a look at brain research and its application to education. He states, and I quote, education is discovering the brain and that's about the best news there could be. Anyone who does not have a holistic grasp of the brain's architecture, purposes, and main ways of operating is as far behind the times as an automobile designer without a full understanding of engines. The decade of the brain occurred from 1990 to 2000. During this time, new imaging technologies allowed us to see inside the brain, which led us to a better understanding of the brain and how it functions. Up until this point, as educators, we often decided how to support student learning by watching students' behavior and adapting our strategies based on the behavior we uh, elicited from students. The, all the new technology has allowed us to have a better understanding of learning um, and what's actually going on inside the brain. All of the new research in technology related to the brain has led to a new discipline of science known as neuroscience. And this particular field is the study of the nervous system, including the brain, spinal cord, and networks of sensory nerve cells or neurons throughout the body. The focus of research in neuroscience is varied. It includes describing the human brain and how it functions normally, determining how the nervous system develops, matures, and maintains itself throughout life, and finding ways to prevent and cure neurological and psychiatric disorders. The focus has not been on application to the classroom, at least not up until this point. The discipline of neuroscience includes many fields, biology, chemistry, and physics. And within those fields, the focus has been on studying the structure, the physiology, and behavior, including human emotional and cognitive functions that apply to learning in the brain. Fields of study in neuroscience include neuroanatomy, developmental neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience, and clinical neuroscience. And those fields are um, developing as we speak with new fields being added on a regular basis. Some of the ways we've been able to see inside the brain include the electroencephalography machine, otherwise known as EEG. And this particular device, um, the patient has electrodes placed on a particular part of their scalp and the EEG records electrical signals from the brain. Those electrical signals kind of detect brain activity when nerve cells are responding to a specific event, and the technician receives a printout that indicates what nerve cells are actually being activated during that particular event. The magneto magnetoencephalography, otherwise known as MEG, looks at magnetic fields that emanate from the head when the brain is active. This particular device is known for its accurate resolution of the timing of nerve cell activity all the way down to the millisecond. Computerized axial tomography, otherwise known as a CAT scan, is another device that has helped us see inside the brain. It utilizes multiple x-rays to generate pictures of organs, internal organs, as well as um, the brain. And, that, and CAT scans typically give us an idea of brain damage, but they can also give us a sense of where blood is flowing in the brain during a certain activity. Positon emission tomography, otherwise known as PET scan, takes a small amount of radioactively tagged glucose that's injected into a subject and it traces where the blood flows in the brain. The higher level of blood flow means the larger amount of the tracer. So as you see in the photo, a normal brain, the higher activity is indicated by colors of uh, the colors red and yellow. 
and within the Alzheimer's brain, the lower activities were, are indicated with the colors green and blue. Magnetic resonance imaging, otherwise known as MRI, uh, is used to look at internal structures including the, the brain. It works by having radio waves pass through a magnetic field around a patient and then creates a 3D image of the structures that it observed. The functional magnetic resonance imaging machine, otherwise known as fMRI, looks at the signal generated by water molecules that are in nerve cells so that when blood flows to a certain area, um, the water in the blood tissue changes and the fMRI can locate the parts of the brain getting more oxygenated blood. So as in the picture, um, when you're hearing something, you can see the blue color indicating where in the brain that's being processed. And when you're seeing something, you can see that the orange and, and uh, red color is where in the brain that particular activity is being processed. The functional magnetic resonance spectroscopy, FMRS, uses the same equipment as a functional MRI. The only difference is that it uses different software to record levels of chemicals in the brain while the subject is thinking. In the picture, you can see a dyslexic uh, brain and what part of the brain is lighting up during activity, and then the same goes for the control sample and what part of the brain is, is lighting up based on activity there. So what has all this technology done for those of us in education? Um, there are definitely new insights that have come from this research. One area is the area of neuroplasticity which is the idea that the brain is malleable and can not only um, compensate for areas that aren't functioning as well, but that nerve cells can continue to grow and develop throughout life. Um, research has told us a lot about emotions and their role in learning, the impact that exercise has on the health of the brain, uh, the teen brain and how it differs from the brain of younger children as well as adults, how sleep and stress affect the brain, and then gender differences both in the structure and function of the brain. All of this information has made its way into both the popular media and into educational journals and books um, over the last 20 years and will continue to do so um, and I think will continue to inform our practice as educators. So what's next? A new field of study. Educational neuroscience is the projected new area of neuroscience in the future. Um, according to Kurt Fisher, who's um, a professor at the Harvard University Graduate School of Education, the potentials of brain science for education are indeed enormous, but realizing them requires building a new interdisciplinary science that explicitly links brain science and education in a collaboration with both playing strong roles. So in this course, we're going to begin the term by focusing on the um, brain research today, the current brain research, um, and we'll come back and revisit the topic of educational neuroscience at the end of the term.